So what I was saying is I met my, I, that wasn't actually the first time I had met my biological father. I met him after my UFC debut, um, but it was the first time I had met my biological little brother on his side. And yeah, I mean, I don't know if I would say emotionally draining, just it was, it was quite a, an emotional roller coaster, and I really haven't been able to, uh, to get over it. I still kind of find myself uh, welling up thinking about everything that's gone on and thinking about all the, uh, the implications of it all, but at the same time, um, you know, my life's got to move on. It was just uh, an odd revelation sitting there. It's like I said in the, in the, uh, the little package you showed before I came on, um, I could, I could just see in my brother's face uh, Saturday at lunch before the fight. We were we sat down and talked one-on-one just about life and how things have been for both of us uh, growing up, you know, each other's interests and, and things that have gone on in each other's lives since then. And, you know, I could see in his face the same look I used to give some of my older best friends when I, I would ask them for advice life advice and just and, and things like of that nature and it, I just had this revelation uh sitting there in front of him he didn't even realize it of like man I uh maybe I have matured a little bit grown a little bit and, and maybe I, I am you know I'm not a kid anymore it's weird and, and how did the meeting come about um well they my brother goes to old, old dominion so he attends the school that the fight was on. So when he told me I was fighting in Norfolk, which my dad lives out there too, I reached out to him and was like, hey, I'm fighting in Norfolk. Let's let's set up the meeting between me and Legend. Let's figure it out. And, uh, you know, everyone was on board. My dad was really um, supportive of it. His mom was supportive of it. And uh, I'm just glad we got the chance to do it. Man, because I remember um, in the third round, I fell into the triangle choke. And it got tight. It got real tight. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was a point where I was like, fuck, I, I might go out. And then right after I thought to myself, like, dude, you might go out. I was like, no, no, we can't do this. Not in front of my little brother. Like, no, this is not happening in front of my little brother. And I just found, like, in 10 miles, I didn't know how I was going to do it. And then out of, right then and there, I just found my way out. Wow. So he gave you inspiration to keep on going. Drive, motivation. No, without a doubt. Like I, I legitimately, I, I was in my mind telling myself, like, no, we're not, we're not a about to, to let this happen in front of him. We're not gonna tap. We're not gonna go to sleep. We're figuring it out, and we did. You know, it, it was, it was like one of those movie moments. You know, you, you never feel like that's that at, like those things actually happen until you're there. Mm. Why were you unhappy with your performance? Was it because you got, you know, almost caught in that triangle? Was it something else? Because it seemed like you were apologetic afterwards. Man, I don't want to go out there and hold on to a win. I, I don't want to just, you know, that those aren't the kind of fights I like to have. If you you if you've watched me fight, I, I like to go out there and be exciting. I like to, but. You know, hats off to Steven. He's a great competitor, and he showed me things that I wasn't prepared for, and I had to completely change my game plan on the fly right then and there and just go back to what I know and, and get the win. So hats off to him. But um, to say that I I was thrown off by the fact that I had spent 10 weeks preparing for a five foot nine wrestler and having my opponent change to a six foot striker on the week of the fight, it, it definitely threw things off. I, uh, especially going in there, you know, in the week leading up, you you tell yourself, oh, it doesn't matter. It, uh, you're, you know, no matter what he does, I'm going to go out there and do the same thing. But then it's not until you get in there and you've got a completely new opponent in front of you that you, you realize like, oh, I, I can't just use the same game plan on him and, uh, and attempt and, and feel and think that I'm going to, uh, just be successful, you know? And, of course, you were supposed to fight Alex Munoz. He pulled out due to injury, and that's where Garcia came in. You also prepared for this fight uh, at ATT in Florida, not AKA. Why the switch? Um, I hate to say it, but I ran into some financial troubles because living in Silicon Valley can get extremely expensive. It got to a point where I couldn't really find anything 
less than like 2600 a month and i just couldn't do it um with you know based off my salaries and everything on my purse I, I i couldn't uh figure it out with training and food like just having to put myself together and i was i was going through a lot of stress trying to figure out how i was going to make things work and then uh i, I talked to my manager malki kawa and we we kind of figured out what we were going to do and he's the one that kind of suggested like hey if you go to att they'll take care of everything for you and i i went to my coaches at aka and i told them the situation i was in i told them like look i'm over here dying like i'm over here um making a detriment to my training and my performance in the room because i'm so stressed out on the financial side they gave, they gave me their blessing to go to, to come here to florida to change my scenery up and just to get back on my feet so I can figure it out. Um, I, I talk with Rosendo quite a bit still. I, I try to keep in touch with him and uh, we still have a good relationship. I still want to have him out my corner. I still want to bring him. I, I still want to have a, a working relationship with him. We're figuring out, but I, I'm not going to lie. I do enjoy being here at ATT. I enjoy uh, my training partners. I love my coaches. I really feel like here at American Top Team, not only do they believe in me, but they, they – they know what they have on their hands, and they know that I can be the champion one day. Wow. Okay. So you're going to stick around. Most definitely. Okay. Um, and so you just said that you came out of a meeting with your your management talking about the future. What did you guys talk about? What did you decide on? Uh, it was very very bright. You know, um, they're they're trying. They want me to, to. They want to reach out and see if we can get something going with Ancestry. Uh, dot com. Some type of. Uh, or, or like maybe even a, a, like a documentary or something they were talking about. But um, as far as fight wise, we're looking to get back in there soon. I'm, I'm looking at May, June, or July. Man, the Ancestry thing is amazing. Ancestry, one of the uh, sponsors of the show, they didn't sponsor this particular episode. I tried to get them on this particular episode when I knew that you'd be joining us, but it's really amazing. Have you talked to anyone from Ancestry to try to do something like this? Because I, I, I have not come across a more famous example of how their company works so well and how it brings families together. You are a walking billboard for them. Have you actually reached out to them yet? No, um, I, I think... Uh, my manager, so Malky's probably going to get that ball rolling here this week. Um, I haven't personally reached out. It's just when all this went down, you know, that wasn't on my mind at all. Um, the only thing on my mind when everything happened was to just, uh, you know, connect with my family and, and to foster and start fostering that relationship. And uh, it's like I, I can't explain my gratitude to Ancestry for all this because after the fight, I didn't even go out and celebrate. I stayed up to like me and my, my brother stayed up to like 5 a.m. talking to each other after the fight. Just once again, going over life, talk, just, just catching up. And it's been really awesome because it's like I, we both grew up as only child, only children. And now we're kind of getting the, uh, the opportunity to, to connect. I get to be a, a big brother. And don't get me wrong, I've been a big brother since. You know, I was 19 since I met my little brother and sister on my mom's side of the family. But with him being so much closer to me in age and having gone through a lot of the similar, a lot miles, of similar take exit uh, 18 beyond to US life experiences as I have, I, it's not that we, we, or anything, it's just I feel like our bond was almost instant. Wow. Uh, now, are there any other family members who you haven't met who you're looking for? So as far as like immediate family, um, we do have, Legend and I uh, have one other brother on my father's side that we're both a little estranged from. I don't think he's met him either. And so that's kind of like my next goal is to, to uh, figure out how we can, you know, link up the whole family. Um, I kind of realized in these past couple of days as I've been reflecting on everything, like maybe that is my purpose is to bring all these people together. Hmm. Do you think this doesn't happen if you're Continue not a famous straight. UFC and fighter? The right lane to take exit 18 beyond to US 441 North. I mean, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, that was one of the first things Legend told me was that it didn't matter that I was a UFC fighter. 
he like that and that was one thing he was a little apprehensive about um in meeting me and everything is like he wanted to make sure that i knew use the right lane to that take exit 18 b none of, this, none of that mattered to him that me being a fighter me being famous me having these instagram followers none of that mattered to him what mattered was us connecting and having a big brother Amazing. Now, I know you said that you met your, your biological father after your UFC debut, but has he ever been to one of your fights? Yes, he was at the he was at my uh, last two fights. So he was at uh, the fight in Tampa, and he was at this last one. Okay, so, so you guys have remained close. You now have a, a real relationship with him. No, without a doubt. Um, I, I, we talk periodically. I try. It, that's the thing. You know, the life of a fighter, I'm, I'm busy a lot, you know. And it's hard for me because I don't want to sit there and feel like I'm blowing him off. But I do. I do. We have we have maintained a really good relationship and I've tried my hardest to, you know, uh, communicate with him as much as possible. But it has been um, a really good relationship. Don't get me wrong. I've had I have uh, an adoptive father and I do have like the biggest father figure in my life was my mom's second husband, my stepdad. And uh he raised me, and don't get me wrong, I appreciate everything they've done, but the relationship I've been able to foster and maintain with my biological father is uh, is very special to me. Um, he's, as you know, and I, I mean, there's no other way to put it, you know, as a young half black man, uh, especially growing up in the South, you know, you, you do, you, you go through certain things, and to finally be able to, to, to talk to someone and be able to relate to someone through that, not only just relate to someone, but to relate to your own father through that, it's, um, words can't, I can't really put into words what it means to have been able to, uh, to have the relationship that we have. I bet. Yeah. I can't imagine. And what about with your mom? Are you guys still close? Are you talking to her? Oh yeah, we're we're super close. I uh, I called her. I called my biological mom as soon as I got back in the locker room after the fight. Um, her like her little kids. They're like I, I don't even know, I can't put into words how much I love those guys. Like I remember when I was nineteen and I first met them. Um, I flew in. To, it was funny. I flew into Norfolk to to meet my mom for the very first time at nineteen, wow. and my little sister was five at the time. And she came up without, this is like literally the first time she's meeting me. She sees me and comes running and jumps in my arms. And like, as soon as she saw me, she like loved me like a brother instantly. And I, I, ever since then, I've been, that's my little sister. You know what I mean? I'd kill for, I'd kill anyone for her. Wow. And, and you took a tour of a, of a, what was it? The, uh, the ships over there. Where, where, where did you go? Where they, they gave you the flag. What did you do there in, in Virginia? We went to Jeb Little Creek. It's their um, aquatic training center, and they use their. Uh, we got to tour their gunship and the Navy SEAL uh, training facility. Actually, wow. And and why you like? How did this happen? You just you just went and did it, or did they ask you to do it? So my dad is the captain of the USS Gonzalez there in Norfolk. Oh wow! And um, my dad had reached out and asked to see if, like, they if we could do like a meet and greet um, with them. And then when uh, when he did that, the UFC PR team kind of put together a whole little uh, day for me and Joe Benavides to go out there and kind of tour the facilities and meet some of the crew members and uh, just have a really special day. It was and it was super special to me. You know, being the the son of service members of Navy officers, even on my adopted side, and to receive that flag, I I legitimately I, I it was spe like I was speechless. I I almost burst into tears right there, but I, I couldn't you know on uh on uh being filmed by the UFC and yeah. in front of all these military dudes, I had to hold it in you know. I bet. Yeah, that's amazing. What a week for you, man. Uh, congratulations on the victory. Congratulations on everything that's happening in your life. It seems like it's all coming together. I know you said uh, in conclusion that you want to return May, June, July. Anyone in particular that comes to mind? 
Man, there's not too many guys out there that I can think of. There's just the, the 155 division so deep in the UFC. There's so many guys, and I'm sure, you know, everybody and their mom kind of wants to get after me and show me that I'm, and you know, kind of prove that, that I'm just some hype train. So whoever wants it, man, free smoke. I don't care. All right, let's go. Well done, Luis Pena. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Violent Bob Ross, one of the great nicknames in the history of this sport. Another great moment for you on Saturday. Thanks for coming on. Enjoy the victory, my man. Thank you, Ariel. Thanks for having me on. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.